let's do part 3 of the chapter which is respiration how did you find part 1 and 2 let us know in the comment section below and also let us know what branch of science is your favorite whether it's chemistry physics or biology and why now let's start the chapter let's begin with an activity take some freshly prepared lime water in a test tube blow air through this lime water in some time lime water would turn milky because when exhaled air is blown through lime water which is also calcium hydroxide the carbon dioxide present in the exhaled air reacts with the lime water and turns it into a milky solution forming calcium carbonate which is insoluble and white in color now you may note it now you may note how long does it take for the lime water to turn milky now use a syringe to pass air through some fresh lime water taken in another test tube note how long it takes for this lime water to turn milky what does this tell us about the amount of carbon dioxide in the air that we breathe out let us know your thoughts in the comments below now let's perform one more activity take some fruit juice or sugar solution and add some yeast to it Take this mixture in a test tube fitted with a one hole cork. Fit the cork with a bent glass tube. Finally, dip the free end of the glass tube into a test tube containing freshly prepared lime water. You would see that the lime water becomes milky as carbon dioxide is produced by mixing yeast in sugar along with the alcohol. We can also say that the end products of fermentation are alcohol and carbon dioxide we have discussed nutrition in organisms in the last section the food material taken in during the process of nutrition is used in cells to provide energy for various life processes diverse organisms do this in different ways some use oxygen to break down glucose completely into carbon dioxide and water some use other pathways that do not involve oxygen well in all cases the first step is the breakdown of glucose a six carbon molecule into a three carbon molecule called pyruvate this process takes place in the cytoplasm further the pyruvate may be converted into ethanol and carbon dioxide this process takes place in yeast during fermentation since this process takes place in the absence of air or oxygen it is called anaerobic respiration breakdown of pyruvate using oxygen takes place in the mitochondria This process breaks up the three carbon pyruvate molecule to give three molecules of carbon dioxide. The other product is water. Since this process takes place in the presence of air or oxygen, it is called aerobic respiration. The release of energy in this aerobic process is a lot greater than in the anaerobic process. Sometimes when there is a lack of oxygen in our muscle cells another pathway for the breakdown of pyruvate is taken here the pyruvate is converted into lactic acid which is also a three carbon molecule this build up of lactic acid in our muscles during sudden activity causes cramps The energy released during cellular respiration is immediately used to synthesize a molecule called ATP which is used to fuel all other activities in the cell. In these processes ATP is broken down giving rise to a fixed amount of energy which can drive the endothermic reactions taking place in the cell. Let's talk about ATP a little more. ATP is the energy currency for most cellular processes. The energy released during the process of respiration 
is used to make an ATP molecule from ADP and inorganic phosphate. Endothermic processes in the cell then use this ATP to drive the reactions. When the terminal phosphate linkage in ATP is broken using water, the energy equivalent to 30.5 kilojoules per mole is released. Think of how a battery can provide energy for many different kinds of uses. It can be used to obtain mechanical energy, light energy, electrical energy and so on. Similarly, ATP can be used in the cells for the contraction of muscles, protein synthesis, conduction of nerve impulses, and many other activities. Since the aerobic respiration pathway depends on oxygen, aerobic organisms need to ensure that there is sufficient intake of oxygen. We have seen that plants exchange gases through stomata, and the large intercellular spaces ensure that all cells are in contact with the air. Carbon dioxide and oxygen are ex exchanged by diffusion here. They can go into the cells or they can go out or away from them and out into the air. The direction of diffusion depends upon the environmental conditions and the requirements of the plant. At night, when there is no photosynthesis occurring, Carbon dioxide elimination is the major exchange activity going on. During the day, carbon dioxide generated during respiration is used up for photosynthesis. Hence, there is no carbon dioxide release. Instead, oxygen release is the major event at this time. Animals have evolved different organs for the uptake of oxygen from the environment and for getting rid of the carbon dioxide produced. Terrestrial animals can breathe the oxygen in the atmosphere, but animals that live in water need to use the oxygen dissolved in water. If we observe fish in an aquarium, we would notice that they open and close their mouths and the gill slits behind their eyes also open and close. What do you think are the timings of the opening and closing of the mouth and gill slits coordinated in some manner? You would find that yes it is because the water engulfed from the mouth is immediately pushed to gills for absorbing oxygen and dissolved water into blood. Then it is removed by gill slits. And now take a guess how many times does the fish open and close its mouth in a minute? Well, oxygen is not highly soluble in water. Only about 9 mg of oxygen per liter of water. So, to meet the demand for oxygen, fish opens and closes its mouth and gills more frequently, which is around 90 to 100 times a minute. Whereas, the typical respiratory rate for a healthy adult human at rest is 12 to 18 breaths per minute. So, now we know that since the amount of dissolved oxygen is fairly low compared to the amount of oxygen in the air, the rate of breathing in aquatic organisms is much faster than that seen in terrestrial organisms. Fishes take in water through their mouths and force it past the gills where the dissolved oxygen is taken up by blood. Terrestrial organisms use the oxygen in the atmosphere for respiration. This oxygen is absorbed by different organs in different animals. All these organs have a structure that increases the surface area which is in contact with the oxygen-rich atmosphere. Since the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide has to take place across the surface, the surface is very fine and delicate. In order to protect the surface, it is usually placed within the body. So, there have to be passages 
that will take air to this area. In addition, there is a mechanism for moving the air in and out of this area where the oxygen is absorbed. In human beings, air is taken into the body through nostrils. The air passing through the nostrils is filtered by fine hairs that line the passage. The passage is also lined with mucus which helps in the process. From here, the air passes through the throat and into the lungs. Rings of cartilage are present in the throat. These ensure that the air passage does not collapse. This is the complete diagram for human respiratory system that we are talking about. Now let's talk about lungs. Within the lungs, the passage divides into smaller and smaller tubes which finally terminate in balloon-like structures which are called alveoli. The alveoli provide a surface where the exchange of gases can take place. The walls of the alveoli contain an extensive network of blood vessels. As we know, when we breathe in, we lift our ribs and flatten our diaphragm and the chest cavity becomes larger as a result. Because of this, air is sucked into the lungs and fills the expanded alveoli. The blood brings carbon dioxide from the rest of the body for release into the alveoli and the oxygen in the alveolar air is taken up by the blood in the alveolar blood vessels to be transported to all the cells in the body. During the breathing cycle, when air is taken in and let out, the lungs always contain a residual volume of air so that there is sufficient time for oxygen to be absorbed and for the carbon dioxide to be released. When the body size of animals is large, the diffusion pressure alone cannot take care of oxygen delivery to all parts of the body. If we talk about humans, if diffusion were to move oxygen in our body, it is estimated that it would take three years for a molecule of oxygen to get to our toes from our lungs. So instead, respiratory pigments take up oxygen from the air in the lungs and carry it to the tissues which are deficient in oxygen before releasing it. In human beings, the respiratory pigment is hemoglobin which has a very high affinity for oxygen. This pigment is present in the red blood corpuscles. Carbon dioxide is more soluble in water than oxygen is and hence is mostly transported in the dissolved form in our blood. While we talk about this, let me tell you a fact you probably did not know about and that is if the alveolar surface was spread out, it would cover about 80 meters square. To give you a perspective, let me tell you how much the surface area of your body is. Well, average body surface area of adult men is 1.9 meters square and the average body surface area for adult women is 1.6 meters square. Now, because of the last surface available for exchange to take place, exchange of gases become very efficient. Hope you are good till now. Okay, now listen carefully to what I am going to tell you. Using tobacco directly or any product of tobacco in any form is harmful. Use of tobacco most commonly affects the tongue, lungs, heart and liver. Smokeless tobacco is also a major risk factor for heart attacks, strokes, pulmonary diseases and several forms of cancers. There is a high incidence of oral cancer in India due to the chewing of tobacco in the form of gutka. Stay healthy. Just say no to tobacco and its products because as we all know, smoking is injurious to health. Lung cancer is one of the common causes of deaths in the world. The upper part of the respiratory tract is provided with small hair-like structures called cilia. These cilia help to remove germs, dust 
and other harmful particles from inhaled air. Smoking destroys these hair due to which germs, dust, smoke and other harmful chemicals enter lungs and cause infection, cough and even lung cancer. Hope you have, uh, hope you have got enough reasons to never smoke. Now let's do a quick recap of some important stuff while discussing a few questions before we come to the end of the respiration part of this chapter. Question 1. What advantage over an aquatic organism does a terrestrial organism have with regard to obtaining oxygen for respiration? Terrestrial organisms take up oxygen from the atmosphere where aquatic animals obtain oxygen dissolved in water. Air contains more oxygen as compared to water. Since the content of oxygen in the air is high, terrestrial animals do not have to breathe faster to get more oxygen. Next question is, what are the different ways in which glucose is oxidized to provide energy in various organisms? There are two ways, anaerobic and aerobic. Next is, how is oxygen and carbon dioxide transported in human beings? The oxygen enters into the blood from the lungs and carbon dioxide is expelled out from the blood into the lungs. How are the lungs designed in human beings to maximize the area for exchange of gases? The lungs are divided into bronchi and the bronchi are divided into bronchioles. The alveoli are small, round or balloon-like structures at the ends of the bronchioles that increase surface area and maximize gas exchange in the lungs. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up, write to us, it really makes our day special. Also share it with other students and let them also learn biology like never before. As I always say, enjoy life. Make healthier choices. Be kind and humble. Study smart. Help others. Have a lovely day and even lovelier life. Keep watching I Say Kids. Good luck. Thank you. Bye-bye.